In the previous videos, we did what should be referred to as low-pass filtering, which is basically we just ignored the components of an image that had less effect on things. Well, it turns out we can do better than that by actually going through and instead of completely ignoring them, sort of compressing those bits. And how does that work? Well, it uses something called quantization. So to quantize something, we go ahead and we divide by a modulus and then round that thing off. So, for example, let's say I wanted to quantize Oh, how about 123? And we'll do it with modulo Q equals 8. Well, when I take 123 divided by 8, that gives me 15.375. Which then rounds off to 15. And so rather than storing 123, we're storing 15. What effectively we've done is we've taken a number that would require 7 bits to store and gotten it down to a number that would take 4 bits to store. Now, it's going to turn out we can do even better than that, but just for right now, you can see that. And so we store the 15, and then we want to come back, when we want to go ahead and reconstruct the image, we take it back a little bit. Now, we can't get the full thing off. This is, again, a lossy kind of compression. But to dequantize my unquantized, I'm just going to take the 15 times the 8, and get 120. You can see it's not exactly what that thing is, but it's a whole lot better than saying, well, we're just going to completely ignore it and call it zero. You end up getting very little round off here, depending on what your Q is. So the question is, when we're talking about doing JPEG, doing image stuff, what should our Q be? Well, that's a more complicated question than you might think. We know we were taking 8x8 eight eight blocks, and that's a standard thing to do when we're talking about JPEG imaging. And we know that the things that are furthest up to the upper left are the most important things down toward the lower right are the least important in terms of visual acuity. So they've done experiments using actual human eyes and how people see things, and they suggest this matrix here. We have different levels of quantization depending on what how important they are. As you can generally see, for the most part, and there are some exceptions, but the closer to the upper left this thing is, the lower the number is, and it gets bigger and bigger as we go down towards the lower right. In general, there will be less round-off error up here and more round-off error down here. In fact, some of these numbers down here are so big, there's, you're going to end up with a lot of zeros, which do make it closer to that low-pass filtering. But one thing to notice is that there is this P here on the outside. This is called the loss parameter. And the basic idea is that this is something that's set when you choose to compress to encode a JPEG image. And the higher the value, the more lossy it gets. From experiments, they've found that if you set p equals 1, 
there's certainly still some compression going on. There's certainly still quantization happening. These are still fairly big numbers we've got here. But with p equals 1, there's virtually no visual difference. The little bits of round off that happen just don't really affect the image very much. But as you start cranking up that loss parameter, start moving it higher and higher, you start to see effects. Even up to something like 3, you can typically still recognize the original image. And you can even go higher than that, honestly. <coughs> but it starts to look worse and worse. So, how would you use this thing? Well, quite simply, each entry you in your DCT matrix, you're going to go ahead and quantitize with the appropriate value. So you're not again, you're not doing a full matrix multiplication, you're going entry by entry dividing them and rounding them off. Now, that could give, possibly give you a little bit of compression because you know you are taking things down a certain amount but it seems a little bit weird that I mean okay we're compressing these things more but when we're talking about a matrix we have to have every entry have the same number of bits the same memory allocation so how do we fix this well we're gonna fix this and we're going to talk about this in a video or two, using something called Huffman coding. And Huffman coding is a way of having different entries in a matrix require a different number of bits. And we'll talk about how that works in a moment, like I said, in a video or two. Before I get there, though, this quantization matrix we've got here is specifically for grayscale images. Things work differently with color. In fact, there's a number of things we should talk in terms of color, and I think that's what the next video is going to be about.